Hello and welcome back to our final product demo for today. In this session, we're going to hear from Zelo, the smart bus platform for organisations providing flexible turnkey and plug-in transportation for commuting shuttles and school runs. In 2020, they saved their clients nearly 4,000 tonnes in CO2 emissions, the equivalent of planting 186,059 trees. Wow! Zelo connects organisations with vetted fleet operators via a mobile app and best-in-class operational tools. They offer route planning and optimization software to control costs and target areas poorly served by public transport. Riders, organizations and fleet operators get access to 24-7 support, operational monitoring and contact tracing safety tools. Organizations save up to 42%. Services run 99.6% on time. Their clients and riders give them an NPS score of 65. And every trip saves 72% in CO2 emissions. Barney Williams, co-founder and CMO of Zelo, will be joining us after the presentation to answer your questions. If you look on the top right hand side, there's a Q&A box. So make sure you pop your questions in there for our guest. Uh, I know I've got plenty. So make sure you enjoy the presentation and I'll see you back here soon. Hi there, my name is Barney Williams. I'm the co-founder and CMO here at Zelo. Um, Zelo is a smart bus platform for, for organisations. We work with lots of companies across the country, across the across Africa and across the USA, uh, helping them deliver a sustainable commuting solution for their staff. So just a bit about Zelo then. Um, so our aim as a company is to deliver a sustainable commuting service for, for employees, solving a few key challenges. The first being parking, um, overcrowded car parking spaces ca causing congestion um, across various locations. Um, trying to reduce the, the need to, to get into a car and use a compelling commuting bus service uh, as an alternative for staff. The second is recruitment, building compelling uh, and simple routes for staff to use that actually make the sites that they're looking to work at more attractive um, for, for them to travel on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the third is obviously reducing um, CO2 generated by um, what, a pointless car journey to being taken to, to sites. Um, and the fourth, which hopefully will go away at some point, is we also deliver safe bus services with social distancing measures in place and COVID secure bubbles for sets groups of staff to use uh, when going to work. Now, in 2020, we actually had a revolutionary year for, for the company. Um, we grew uh, four times year on year and completed one million commuting rides um, acro across all our, uh, all our platforms. Um, what we like to do here at Zelo is really, really deliver value for money and, and drive savings against traditional operators or against a, an existing service that companies may have in place. And we believe we can save up to 42% in comparison to those traditional operations that, that may be running um, uh, for your sites at the, at the moment. And as mentioned, we have a, a global footprint um, of three countries. Uh, we're based here in London, um, but have a team in the US and South Africa. Now, just to touch on the value for money point, um, I think when looking at Zelo face to face against a traditional operation or even an existing service you may have in place at the moment, what you probably pay for is a very, very effective service with good operations um, and you get with that a, dr a driver and a vehicle as part of that operation. Now, as I'm sure some of you understand, running a bus service isn't just as simple as running a bus service. There are lots of additional things that go on uh, when managing that, that service, including managing suppliers and operators, uh, dealing with customer queries, um, building new routes. And what Zelo does is it uses service technology and data to take the hassle away from clients managing these services themselves. So when you break that down, if you look at managing your transport, things like managing suppliers, managing all the risk and liabilities that go, go with that, actually promoting the services and, and pushing the message out and driving awareness for, for, for employees. And as I said, dealing with queries and issues, can add up to a lot of time, effort and energy. Going on to that, there's also missed opportunities. How can we actually make these services more successful? So what we do is we, we use technology to, one, allow employees to, char uh, employers to charge employees for using services. That's obviously optional, but that can drive lots of revenue. And if you offer a fair rate that's cheaper than using a car, then employees normally understand that there is some cost associated with using such services. 
um, we, we build lots of reports and obviously um, making sure you're very clear on, 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 on utilization and who's actually using the services is vital to deliver optimizations going forward. And also actually adding more services can take more time and energy if, if staff are scaling up as they, as they come back to the office um, after, after the pandemic. And further, further to that, optimizing. And that's a really big thing for us here at Zelo. We like to look at, look at the data, the utilization, the efficiency of vehicle movements to make sure that we have a, a clear focus on the cost per rider. And this allows us to, to be proactive with our clients, ensuring that we are making timetables efficient, ensuring that we are making the vehicle sizes to match the demand efficient. And we we're able to do that through a, a very, very um, sophisticated uh, uh, operator supply network that I'll touch on um, slightly later. So overall, I believe that we can deliver true value to, to clients looking to either uh, take either re, re, reintroduce a new shuttle uh, shuttle service or actually look at optimizing a current shuttle service they may have in place. And just to hammer home the point, our full end-to-end -end technology um, really, really allows us to, to deliver this. So everything from um, mobile apps to charge employees, uh, through to a, a flexible supply network uh, up and down the country, which also includes EVs. With that clear focus on cost per rider, it really allows us to, to deliver a very, very cost efficient service that drives value for money, but also massively improves the experience for, for employees. Okay, so how do we actually go out and do this? Um, and really what this is, is a five step process um, using the service technology data uh, layers that I mentioned. So the first thing is looking at the data itself. So what we ask for is uh, postcode data of staff. We put that through our platform that understands where there's key demand areas of those staff, but also where there's gaps in the public transport network. We want to complement the public transport network. We don't want to compete against it. If there's a direct train running to an office, obviously it doesn't make sense for us to run a bus route next to it. So we find the gaps. Uh, we understand where people are more likely to drive and we run compelling services um, on the back of that and, and very detailed routing based on where people actually live. Now that can also uh, take into consideration things like park and ride locations or shuttle services from nearby train stations, which actually we can, we can combine into, into a route if that makes, makes commercial sense uh, and also makes sense for the staff, uh, making sure that the route isn't too long and too, and too windy. Um, once we've agreed routes and timetables, we then build that onto our app and website. So there's a customizable uh, website for, for, for all employers. Um, you can book seats on, employers can book seats on that. Um, it's very simple to use. They can track the driver in real time. Think kind of Uber, but for, for buses. Um, so it's a really, really simple, slick solution for, for employees to use for their daily commute. Uh, we don't own any vehicles ourselves. So actually we partner with our vetted operators. There's quite a stringent process for those operators to become part of the Zelo platform. And what that allows us to do is have two things. It first allows us to have scale. So we work with multiple operators in, in the similar regions. Um, so if, 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 there's, if there's numerous staff returning or, or a, a large need that's required, then we can deliver that. But also it offers us flexibility. So scaling the services up and down based on the true demand that we're seeing. So everything from eight seats to 80 seats. And right now we also have a big focus on EV vehicles. So there was a, a program in place um, that we have where we can actually um, transition into electric vehicles um, so it's particularly important to those companies looking to reduce their CO2 emissions. Uh, next is reporting. So once we set services up, we actually uh, we actually build custom reports for us for our um, clients, um, and that can be everything from utilization data all the way through to the CO2 savings that we can actually we're actually driving from people switching from us into into a, a switching from Zelo switching from uh, using a car into 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 Zelo. And that reporting can be daily, weekly, monthly, whatever you require, we can, we can deliver. Um, and really, really allows us to be proactive with you and have an honest conversation about how, how services are performing and how we can make them more efficient and more compelling for staff uh, going forward. And lastly, uh, we are not just a technology company, we also have humans. Um, so we have a, a dedicated account, account support team. Um, they're there to, uh, with a clear focus on the cost per rider, looking at optimizing services and ensuring that the service is performing correctly. We have a 24 seven customer support team for employees to speak to at any one time. Um, and we have a clear focus on that cost per rider as mentioned. 
just going on to a couple of case studies, and I've got I've got two examples here to show you. This first one here is with uh, with, with a, a great partner of ours, in Canton. Um, we're working with them on on inland border border facilities across the UK. So they came to us with a problem where they had um, uh, numerous staff without car parking up and down the country. Um, they were considering running services themselves, but actually what they needed was a, a solution and, and someone to come in and actually be the umbrella across multiple sites, but also use data to make sure the, the services were going to work over the long term. So we run uh, services across six sites. Um, there's 12 routes going to those sites, so two per site. And it's a 24 hour service with service times built around the shift patterns of, of the staff that are working there. Um, it's been a really successful service. Um, we've gone from 20, uh, from 10,000 rides in the first month to 20,000 rides in, in, the, in the second month. And that's continuing to grow. Um, a really, really high service rating for employees. So the people that use it really enjoy it. Um, and 97% of the services are on time. So it's a superly, uh, super um, efficient and, and operationally sound service that we're operating across the six sites. Um, the next case study is with a Mercado Group. So this is a slightly different uh, uh, example. We're actually, we're working with Carlo's head office um, in, in Hatfield in, in the UK. Um, and Carlo really came to us with, with two challenges, the, the two that I mentioned at the start. So firstly, parking challenges, and secondly, recruitment challenges. Um, and actually what we've done since launching just one route using the data um, of the staff, it's redeveloped the service over time. So we now have a mixture of, of home to work routes, of shuttle services from nearby train stations, um, and also some of those, some of those also combine, combine the two. Um, <clears throat> this is, so this is now operating 26 daily services, but the key, key metric that we focus on is actually how much can we save uh, Ocado on recruitment. And we've measured that by looking at the staff that use our service and they're, they're likely to move to a different role if, if Zero wasn't available. So some uh, employees at Ocado have actually ditched their cars because, because the, the, the links that we're providing from nearby towns to Hatfield. And Ocado really value that because they want to attract staff to Hatfield, um, especially as they're a, they've got a, te they're a tech organisation. They want to attract developers who don't want to who who may be inclined to go into London to to, to find tech work, but actually they can they can attract those staff um, using using the Zero solution. Uh, just a bit more about our app. Um, so the app has really been built um, to make the commuting experience for employees really, really slick and really, really simple, but also customizable so that we can we can change certain things like timetabling and ticketing. So actually, um, what we've built is a flexible ticketing platform that allows you to buy anything from a single journey through to a, um, a, a bundle of rides. Um, and what that does is it effectively banks credits in your Zillow app. So employees can purchase those services uh, on the app or it can be free. Uh, it's a very straightforward solution um, and actually once they have that bundle they can go in and opt into the journeys that they require so for example if they're working monday tuesday wednesday but not thursday their credits don't burn if they don't don't actually use the service on, on thursday they have to practically go in and, and select that service they can also edit their journey in, in real time five minutes before departure so uh, how, how that works is that they can um, effectively go into the app very simply they click edit they can switch on to the next service time if they're if they're working overtime or if their if their shift is running um, running a bit late um, or they need to stay in the office for longer. Um, so it makes it really flexible for them um, and, and allows them to kind of control their commute on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, as mentioned, they can track the vehicle in real time. They can see the driver's name. They can see the registration number. They can see the map with the pickup point. So it's very clear of, of what they need to do. And lastly, if, if they have any other questions, they can speak to our 24 seven support team on the app as well through live chat. We've currently got a response time over a 24 hour period of less than two, two minutes, something that we're very proud of and something that we'll continue to push. We, we know that getting to work is, is can be a stressful experience. So we wanna make sure it's as simple and as, as smooth for um, employees using us as, as possible. <clears throat> so next on to our model. Um, so what we do is we effectively outline the cost of our services um, and that's, that's delivered after the uh, after the uh, routes are decided based on the data that we've, we've looked into uh, and also the timetable that that um, that those services should operate to. Um, we outline those costs um, and that's normally on a, on a day uh, day basis. Um, <clears throat> and then if if um, required, we can then also take the rider revenue that's generated from those services off um, off the overall cost. So, for example, if a daily service is £500 per day to operate and we generate £300 worth of ticket sales, the cost for that particular day is 200 pounds. 
But what we really like to push, as mentioned at the start and, and to summarize, is that with Zelo you get the full end-to-end -end service experience. Um, and that's really built because we want to deliver a really good, good, efficient service that delivers value for money. So if you look at a local operator with a vehicle rental and a dri driver, yes, our, their costs might, might be slightly slight lower on the face of it, but you're, you're forgetting those hidden costs, the rider support, the route planning, the internal marketing, the supplier management, wrapped around, wrapped around the service uh, using, the, using the tech that um, I've described in this presentation. And then actually you can go one step further through optimization. So I can guarantee the services that we, we may launch together will not be the services that end up being the set services we have in place because we look to optimize and we make, make services as efficient as possible. That then on top of taking rider revenue off the bill, over time will then decrease your costs as rider numbers go up. And that's what we're all about. Taking, taking ownership of the riders and ensuring that you're getting the best value for money possible. Uh, just to summarize then, so um, we have a very kind of quick timeline to go to go live. Um, we can we can pop up services within one week if required. Um, we like to have kind of two to four weeks run up to a launch, which allows us to actually promote services and actually market services on, on your behalf. Um, so what we do to start with is that obviously get some meat on the bones of, of your site and actually understand a bit more about um, what services we could be operating. So we offer a free no obligation workplace transport cons consultation where we look at that data and come back to you with suggestions on, on areas that you could improve either a current service or, or looking if you're looking to introduce a new service. We are on the cost of those services. We have digitalized the, the services on our, on our platforms. And then we deliver a very, very sophisticated marketing plan to drive awareness. And we like to have to two weeks run up until wheels, wheels are actually moving uh, for, those, for those services. Um, We'll then launch a service and have an ongoing uh, conversation and dialogue with 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 uh, with our set team and with your teams on how we can make the service uh, services um, better over the long run. How can we make them more efficient? And ultimately, how can we deliver you better value for money? So thank you very much for listening. Um, if you want to get in touch, please drop me an email. My, my email is barney at zero dot co. Um, I'd be delighted to talk to you about what services we can offer. Um, and please, please feel free to ask me any questions. Have a great show. Cheers. Welcome back to the Q&A. Thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget to add your questions to the top right hand corner. Now, every all of these videos are going to be on demand for you to be able to catch up on. But I am joined now live um, to do the Q&A with Barney Williams, C, uh, co-founder and CMO of Zelo. It's great to meet you, Barney. How are you doing? You too. Yeah, good. Thanks. So nice, nice to meet you. Nice to be here. Fantastic. Well, um, I think what we should do is maybe start off by just doing a real quick zip um, through what the product demo, um, just in case anybody missed that. Um, so if you could start off with that, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so we offer smart bus, bus, bus services for organisations um, across the UK, across South Africa and across um, uh, so, uh, the USA as well. Um, we work with numerous numerous clients um, delivering bus services to their employees to get to work. Um, a variety of solutions, um, shuttle services, park and ride solutions, or, or home to work solutions, um, and we do that using da uh, data, tech, and um, uh, a very kind of uh, operationally robust service layer. Um, so employees get um, uh, an app they can use to book services. Um, clients get um, detailed automated reporting um, about service utilization. And we, were, we have a real big focus on kind of offering value for money on those services. So we, we spend a lot of time making sure services are, are super optimized, um, make, making sure the employees are enjoying using them um, and making sure the clients are getting what they need um, from their services. Well, it sounds like a win-win-win proposal, doesn't it? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, so how does your service deal with multiple sites across, say, for instance, a campus? Um, yeah, so we work with kind of numerous organisations um, that are kind of split in, I'd say, kind of two buckets. So we work a lot of, with a lot of, kind of logistics and distribution companies. Um, so you know, companies that have large warehouses with, with multiple employees, they tend to be out of town, so, so not very well served by public transport. Um, and on the other side, we work with lots of kind of head offices. So the likes of kind of Ocado, um, the head office in, um, in Hatfield, where you know, you have uh, maybe up to 2,000 employees, but only 500 car parking spaces. So it's obviously a big challenge there in terms of um, the, the operational um, uh, complexity that that brings. Um, so when we work with, work with sites themselves, um, we actually, we, we, we go in and we look at the employee data of those sites. So we understand where there's kind of key demand areas. 
we understand where public transport is is actually not catering very well for those areas and where we think where we can find routes where um where people tend to drive more um that's where we feel like we can offer offer services that are going to be compelling for them to switch from a car into into something sustainable um, and at the same time also consider things like you know nearby train stations that we can can connect so if people need to get public transport further afield they can connect into our services um and then we build those routes um, we, we populate them, them on our Apple website um, and, and obviously then we, we kick in to gear with marketing support to actually drive awareness of the services um, and get people to start booking on um, and, and, and using them. Um, and we can work with um, uh, you know, sites that have multiple companies within the same site. Um, and, and we kind of have the, the tech platform that allows us to um, dis distribute employee seats um, for each particular business at that site, which obviously is really powerful if, you work, if you're talking to a, you know, a large business park or, or an area that has multiple um, multiple organisations on, on the same on the same plot of land. Um, so we, we've got a kind of real flexible platform to work with kind of multiple different types of, of organisations. That's amazing. And of course, that what really stood out, I mean, there's lots of, of information there, but is it is a really bespoke offering, which for anybody listening in big business, I mean, that that's just fantastic because you'll be able to actually just fit in with, with whatever they need. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's really about being being really tailored and making sure that the services fit with the day-to-day -day running of that organization so whether that's running a timetable that fits with the the shift patterns of those of those particular employees certainly on, on the logistics and distribution side um and making sure you have enough flexibility that um you know it's really compelling for, for the employees to use because ultimately no one wants empty buses running around because the clients are paying for it um so we take the kind of rider approach we make sure we, we really drive riders um to use the services and, and make sure they're enjoying them fantastic and better for the environment as well so um on that note then empty buses so your are your operators using social distancing on their buses and how does that work obviously it'll impact lots of different elements of costings yeah. and um, environmental side of things as well yeah absolutely um so you know covid actually for us has been quite revolutionary because um lots of clients have been turning to us um where they were previously relying on public transport they were they're turning to us to kind of provide a safe bubble for their staff mm. um because we're obviously tracking all the data of who's, who's who's using what when we have things like contact tracing available um and, and obviously guaranteed seats through the booking platform um in terms of kind of the costings and and, and how it's worked with social distancing We've we've tried to um, kind of standardise our costings, but but kept a fifty percent occupancy level. Um, some clients go up as far as far as twenty five percent if they if they have particular concerns. Um, so we, we make sure you know there's there's all the standard things like um, you know face masks and mandatory um, and and the signage on all, all the vehicles. But through the technology, you can actually you know very 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 um, confidently manage the utilisation of those vehicles. Um, and slowly but surely people are going back to kind of full um you know, full utilization on vehicles but obviously probably waiting until june 21st um until that's happened and some organizations are actually continuing to pay for um you know vehicles at 50 percent occupancy just to ensure that safety fantastic gosh it sounds like covid's almost done you a little bit of a favor business-wise <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> It's nice. It's nice that some businesses are, take, are um, able to take advantage of um, some positives that have come out of the pandemic, because let's face it, there haven't been that many. Um, so can you integrate your service to smart parking for something like Park and Ride, for instance? Yeah, absolutely. And um, it, it really the service design element of what we do um, comes out in the data analysis. So um, the, the algorithm that we have effectively maps all the employees, understands where there's kind of key demand areas. But obviously, you know, naturally, there's always going to be areas that don't have enough demand, so don't merit, um, you know, running a, a route through various towns and towns and villages to, to the site. And also, we don't want it to be kind of long and windy. It's always got to be, you know, we want to make it fast and, and really simple for employees to use. Um, so that's where we start using things like park and ride um, locations. Um, and so we can actually we actually manage the park and ride solution. So if there's like a particularly large kind of car parking challenge at a site. We'll go away. We may run a few services that have um, routes from core demand areas, um, but also we may also complement that with a park and ride solution. So um, people can park off site and then get shuttled in using our services, which, which work, works really well for people that are coming further afield um, and, and don't really merit a, a kind of standard route um, from, from where they live. Fantastic. So whereabouts in the UK do you operate uh, at the moment? 
Um, so all over the UK, um, everywhere from um, we're running routes in, in Scotland at the moment, all the way down to Cornwall. Um, so um, we, we tend to kind of work in kind of four or five key regions, um, but but can operate everywhere across the UK. Um, we have a kind of hub in the Midlands, um, a hub in the Northwest, a hub around London and the home counties, and, and a hub in the Southwest. Um, but that that through our operator partner um, network, which we we spent time building over the last the last few years. Um, we can we can stretch from any end of the country. Um, so so it's kind of you know some some actually clients come to us and use us as a kind of umbrella solution for all their services across the country. So we may have you know one or two locations or even kind of you know six or seven locations across the UK all managed under the Zelo umbrella, which helps them kind of standardise things like um, you know, obviously the procurement process, reporting, utilisation data, and they get all that kind of information as a collective rather than kind of piecemeal um, from different sites. Fantastic. So, for instance, if I wanted to come to you um, as a big business, how long would it take? Um, the, how long would the process be to, uh, to set up the services that I need, for instance? I, I, it's quite a difficult question because I suppose it depends on what business and, and how big it is. But yeah. for instance, say a, 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 um, a mid-scale business that needed quite a lot of um, different implementations. Yeah, sure. So um, I guess the first thing is like we obviously identify the, the challenge that that company is going through. So you know, the, the problems we tend to fix are going to be you know, recruitment challenges, so attracting employees from different areas, um, car parking challenges, or they want to kind of, you know, most companies we work with want to reduce their CO2 emissions um, as well. So we identify that problem. Um, and then it tends to take us kind of, you know, two to four weeks um, from kind of the initial data analysis to wheels moving. Um, and there's kind of various steps along the way. So obviously there's like a you know service design element where we, we 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 work out what services we're running. We agree that with the clients. Um, we then digitalize the service, so we, we we build the app and website functionality for for the employees to use. We get our marketing um, going and kick, kicking into gear. So everything from you know referral schemes to posters to flowering days to, to cupcakes at, at, at the site itself, uh, which goes down very well. Um, uh, and anything to drive awareness, and that can kind of be you know anywhere between two to four, two two weeks before wheels actually move, so people can start booking before the service go live. Um, that, that's and- that's amazing, Barney. Yeah. Like I actually genuinely am shocked at, at, at that time frame. You know that that's that's a really short time frame from you know initial call to, to decision to then cupcake, you know, to <laughs> to the full implication, you know, yeah. I- implementation. Sorry, that that's fantastic. Yeah, we, we've we've worked kind of hard to build uh, you know, a, a kind of quite sophisticated launch team, um, an operations team. So it's, all the clients we work with have a, a, a three person kind of contact um, and, and support. So um, you have a what we call internally the customer success manager. So they're the, the people putting everything together from you know, the data through the through to the launch. You have a marketing manager to, to help drive awareness, and you have an operations manager to ensure that everything's running smoothly and, and, and there's no kind of surprises there. Um, but also you get the kind of twenty four seven support from um, from our our support center as well, and they've they've really worked hard to make that process very streamlined, very slick. Um, you know, we've turned around services very quickly because sometimes it could be quite an urgent need for for someone if they were, for example, um, you know, they made a snap decision to bring employees back from the office and they need to go live in two weeks, which is happening at the moment. Um, you know, we can we can turn those around really quickly, and it's really thanks to our operator network we built um, and our, our really great operator partners that, that that's that's possible. Fantastic. So you mentioned um, Ocado, you mentioned National. Um, what other businesses are you servicing at the moment? And are there any other businesses that you'd like to service that you might think um, wouldn't wouldn't know that they needed your service, for instance? Yeah, so um, kind of like I said before, I mean, we kind of work with, with large head offices um, so that they have kind of challenges with the park, car parking uh, primarily um, and also CO2 emissions. So to people such as Ocado and Jaguar Land Rover, you know, big out of town locations um, where everyone's trying to drive in, trying to find a parking space. It's not great for the environment. It's not great for the employee experience either. Mm. Um, and then on the other side, the, the logistics distribution side, uh, like I mentioned, the large, you know, large, huge warehouses that everyone sees driving down the motorway. Um, you know, the likes of Amazon we work with, uh, Wincanton, the largest 3PL um, in, in the UK, um, uh, and, and also the recruitment agencies of those companies so you know a lot of what we go what we do for those companies is driven around um recruitment and retention of staff um and if, at the moment with the kind of labor shortage because of brexit 
people are looking at ways of putting on you know incentives for staff to get into work and track them to those sites um and also use it as a kind of advantage over other sites nearby so if you're offering free travel from a you know from a nearby town to those sites and actually that acts a great um, recruitment tool for for those particular companies um so i think i think anyone really in, in those sectors but also anyone that has the, the problems that i've mentioned so you know parking is one of the biggest challenges um retention and recruitment the second one but but also you know if, if you want to reduce co2 emissions one of those key the one of the key elements is obviously cut people driving to, to work which someone else goes un, uh, slightly unforgotten um slightly forgotten um and we can have a real impact you know one zero on the road takes an average 30 cars off the road um and i think that's you know it's quite a powerful message especially if co2 is a, a kind of big big focus for the companies which i'm sure i'm sure it will be Mm. It's great that it has such a massive knock on effect all the way down the chain as well for retention of staff. I think that's um, a, a fantastic byproduct as well. Um, so, how do employees find out about the services? So, you've mentioned about supporting them um, with, uh, with marketing, um, mm. uh, but maybe you could simply talk us through the experience of, of the employee. I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, sure. Um, so every client we work with has a, a customizable booking page on, on the website and on our app. So they'll download the Zillow app, uh, they'll search for their particular site or company, um, and they'll have kind of a very simple booking flow, as you can see on like the likes of train line, for example. You know, it's really straightforward, really simple. But obviously all the pickup points and the timetables are built around that workforce. So um, there'll be various pickup points they can choose from. There'll be uh, various times to reflect their shift patterns, um, or if it's an office-based business, you know lots of times in the morning and lots of times in the evening when people want to get get back to and from work um they go through they book tickets um on 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 our app it can be free or paid for um so around 50 percent of our services are free because the clients are offering it as an incentive um and then 50 percent are paid for it tends to be kind of quite a, a small amount you know anything from one pound fifty to, to four pounds return dependent on the on the length but we take that revenue and pass it back to the, the client. So it does act as a way of kind of generating um, discount from, from the service, which is helpful as well. Um, so they book tickets. Um, they, they then, on the day of travel, they get a push notification. As if you'd see on a, an Uber app, for example, you'll see the driver arriving. Um, you'll see the, uh, the, the vehicle registration, the vehicle details. Um, and then they'll jump on board with their, their Zillow app, um, scanning on with a QR code. Uh, and obviously we're tracking all this data in the, in the background so we can see who's booked, we can see who's boarded, and we can make sure that's all, all recorded and reported back on. Um, uh, and then hopefully they get a comfortable ride to work at, at the time they need they need to and they'll keep booking with us, which is, is kind of the, the, the ultimate aim that people stay and they basically, you know, we ultimately change habits, get people out of cars, get people using public transport, connecting into us um, and, 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 using, and using us for the foreseeable. It sounds like um, the sustainability and the, the environmental impact um, to yourself um, and obviously your business partner has been really high on the agenda. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think it's it's high on everyone's agenda, and uh, I think um, the, the 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 commute, the day the daily commute, is one of those big big challenges. Seventy five percent of people um, that travel to work outside of London drive, so you know it's, it's a massive challenge, um, and, and and something that. We we personally grew up with you know, we, we we didn't live in in city centres we lived we lived out in town, um, and, and you know getting to to work getting to school even when we were younger was was you know relying on a lift from a parent or, or driving ourselves, um, and actually you know that 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 challenge is common across all all, all the country, um, and we we believe that we founded the company because we believe that the services that were available just just weren't tailored around a particular location or or your needs. Um, and so by using the data and, and complementing it with, with technology, but also like a really great operational service, then, then we're hoping we can kind of go some way into solving, solving that problem. Although with your tracing element, damn it, you've taken away missing the bus <laughs> and missing first lesson. No, no, <laughs> I'm only joking. We never did that, I promise. <laughs> um, okay, so last question, if that's okay. Um, it sounds like you guys work and integrate really nicely with um, different companies, not just the ones that you're working with, but potentially other companies that they're already um, have on board in their businesses. Is this something that you guys are really passionate about as well? Uh, 
Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, we, we work with companies that, that may have an existing service in place. So they you know, they may have a long standing relationship with another uh, another bus or coach operator, and that, that was going to be a local operator that does that service. Um, and actually, they, they turn to us because they need the, the te- technology and the utilization data and the optimizations, um, which which they don't have time to manage themselves because you know that, that takes a lot of work from, for, for someone in on the organization side to then brief another, another operator. So we try and take all that hassle away, and we actually work with the if, if a company would like us to work with the operator and they they pass our um, our vesting procedure, um, then then we can actually on, on board them onto our our platform so they can. They can the companies can use their, their existing operator, but with the new Zelo technology on top to really give the service a boost and also maybe have a kind of you know a fresh feel in terms of routing and data and optimization to look at actually how can we improve the service going forward. Um, so yeah, absolutely, we can work with companies that have existing operations in place, um, or if we need to create a new new need, then obviously we we would go about that as well. Well, fantastic. Thank you, Barney. It's been so insightful talking to you and learning more about Zelo. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add before I uh, wrap up? Uh, I think the only thing is, um, if, if anyone likes to get in touch, um, uh, my email is barney at zelo.co, barney spelled B-A-I-N-E-Y, um, and I can pass it on to the relevant team member. Um, or if you'd like to email sales at zelo.co, you know, we, we'll happily um, uh, take a look. And actually, we're offering a, a kind of free um free no obligation um data cons- consultation at the moment so you know we, we can look at all the data uh, we can analyze it we can suggest optimizations on, on current services if that's if that's necessary um and we can come back to you on, on how, how we would go about it um all free of charge fantastic well thank you so much it's great to meet you um good luck with the business and thank you all so much for joining us um and it is uh don't oh, where am I? Here we go. Um, if you want to find out more, um, you can um, follow um, the link down at the bottom. And also, we hope you have a great day and we look forward to seeing you on another talk really soon. Cheers.